I'm getting ready on my TR6 engine to uh, take this block to the machine shop and I'm doing the final bits um, and, and that includes removing the core plugs, removing the oil gallery plugs, and removing the, the locating pins. Now in my research on how to do this and since it's not in the manual I found a lot of people doing it in ways that uh, were horrible and the locating pins they would uh, completely uh, mangle up the locating pin uh, and you'll see in my method uh, there is no damage whatsoever in pulling this out. Uh, the other thing I saw is people struggling with these oil gallery plugs and just not being able to get them out and having to take them to the machine shop and have the machine shop take them out. Uh, and then the lastly, um, the core plugs uh, don't do it this way. Uh, there's a better way and I'll make that suggestion at the end. So what I'll show you in this video is how I pulled it uh, with, the, with videos of actually pulling them, video of actually pulling it. And I'll show you a special, the special puller I made to pull these out with no damage that you can make too. It's, it's, if you have a drill press, uh, you can make one too. So, and, and a pair of ice grips. So anyway, um, here we go. Yeah, two or three applications like this, and uh, once it seeped, and uh, it'll be good to go. See, the paint's about burned off. That was a sign that it was about ready last time. So let's see if this one's about ready to go. Yeah, there it goes, really easy. So now we'll go on to the next one. So uh, this is not coming out. It's, I don't want to pull any harder than that. I'll bend tools and that kind of thing. Uh, so. Really stubborn compared to the other ones. The other ones took two minutes, something like that, to heat up. I think I'm going to let the PB blaster soak in that one. I'm not going to do any more. Okay, the next challenge is how do I get these pins out? And what I've been doing is uh, off camera. So I've been uh, heating this up. And uh, I've been, oh, maybe five, seven minutes on this. And I keep, uh, keep using the infrared on it. And I'm looking for, uh, it was at 230. Now it's at 167, so I need to heat the sucker up again. So 230 doesn't scare me uh, as far as uh, the, the amount of temperature this thing gets. Um, 200 degrees is operating temperature, right? Or uh, close to 200 degrees. So uh, I'm just going to keep uh, keep doing this and and keep checking the checking the temperature. Okay, so something about these pins is you don't want to put steel to steel because it'll, it'll, it'll wreck it, right? It, it'll, it'll just mess everything up. So as long as you're using a softer metal um, than the one that you're, uh, that you're working on, you'll be okay to scratch the softer metal. So what I did was I created a... I took a piece of aluminum, drilled a hole on it, and cut a slot in it. And built a vice.
it's not turning now, it was turning before. Now I'm going to have to heat it up some more. It's not turning now. I got, got excited, got the camera out. And, uh, and uh, let, let it cool down. It took quite a while to heat this up enough for this to work. Here's 247, 230. getting hot. The aluminum is heating up. My hand. No wonder. That thing's long. Got you king. Whew. That was a workout. So, uh, one pin removed and I did no damage. I did no damage to it because uh, the aluminum, aluminum isn't gonna scratch the uh, steel. It's, uh, you can see that it's fine. A little afraid to touch it. Get a paper towel, wipe it off a little bit. You can see that I did not, uh, Beat the, you can see I didn't beat the snot out of it, so I'm uh, doing this with the second one and it will turn now. But I had to turn the uh, I had to turn the tool over to get it to work. So I'm gonna this is a one one and done. Sorry about that. I, camera work, but it's one and done. You can only use this once and then you turn it over. So I'll have to make this tool. Uh, once for every two of these pins. Okay, to get this to come out, I had to use a pry bar. And, you know, so I put a piece of aluminum under the base of it and pry against the aluminum, not against the block. And I'm not prying really, really, really hard. I'm using a shorter bar. Uh, but I needed that leverage on both sides to get it to come up. I did not want to pry pry in there, uh, although I could have used an aluminum blot wedge or something like that under there to pull it out, but uh, this is how I elected to do it. It's on the back of the engine, and these pins are a smaller diameter than the other one, so I had to re-drill another hole. Heated it up to 250 degrees again, and I had a little bit of a difficult time. I had a difficult time getting it to, being able to pry up on it, so I ended up doing was taking, this is a brass punch. The advantage of using a brass punch is it won't mar steel. If you happen to hit something, uh, you, uh, the, the punch will deform before um, it does. So being very careful not to hit the bearing journals, I came under here uh, like this and, and, and started tapping it up like this. Once I got it loose, um, and, and I noticed another little technique thing, is start with very small wiggles. Watch the top of it. And watch the top to move. Start with very small wiggles, because uh, if you try to go too big, you'll just spin it. Start with very small wiggles, and then it will it will come out. So uh, uh, there we go. And you can see a little bit more detail on the uh, on the jig I'm using, the, the clamp I'm using. Uh, I, I've cut twice through that slot. It's compressed now with with the uh, with the vice grips, um, but that's enough to hold it. If you try to 
push it too far. If you try to turn it too much, it will slip. But if you just use little tiny little turns like this at first, it'll go well. So anyway, so I've got one more to go and I am done pulling these pins out. Uh, one last thing I meant to mention, because the ones in the back are smaller than the ones in the front, do the ones in the back first and you should be able to get it with just one hole. In other words, do, the, do, uh, uh, do one with the small hole, turn it over, do the other one uh, with, the, with the small hole, then go back to the drill press and drill the bigger hole in it and do the same on the other side. Now uh, this gives you an idea of how thick this piece of aluminum is. Uh, it's about the same thickness as my pinky. And uh, where did I get this? My son-in-law, redneck uh, fabricator, uh, has a favorite salvage yard in Tennessee that he likes. And he got me a bunch of this. And uh, that's where I got it from. It's just aluminum. Okay, I wanted to show you how I pulled out these uh, core plugs and how I just did them just, just so nicely. I did, but I would be lying. Um, that one came out nicely. If I saw, I was a little, I was actually not wanting to even show this, not even wanting to admit I did it. This is how my core plugs came out. Yuck. Look at that one. I am embarrassed by this. That, that, that that's what it took. And, and, and I'll tell you the tools I used and what I wouldn't do again. So I used a good sharp punch to punch the hole through it, or you know, people say use a screwdriver, and you know, and some of them came out that way. You can see I used the punch and then pried it out, and it and it came out that way. Um, others, you know, this one I did, and I found if I just kept punching around, chiseling around the end, relieve the tension, it would start to move. Um, others, I had to cut through uh, here and this one was a disaster this one punched into the block and, 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 and I should, instead of putting a hole in it and, and holding it in hold, holding it out it, it went into the block and I had to fight it uh, inside the block this one went inside the block too and I had to squish it down uh, to get it out so I was about and again I, I did discover toward the end if I relieved all the tension around the edges uh, it would um, it would release it, it would release and start moving um, I wish and this this one spun actually I punched it right I think you can see the hit mark here I punched it with this my brass punch I punched it right here with the brass punch and it spun like this, and this end stuck out. And so I could grab it and pull it out with the vice grips. What would I do if I had to do this again? Well, the very last one I pulled out, it started moving. So I was punching away at it with the, I was starting to do the whole thing of relieving the edge, and it started moving. And I said, well, okay, you know, I'm gonna try the whole, put a screw in it. And I had been using smaller screws. This time I used, I got thinking about it, and, and this big bolt uh, has a lot of surface area, so I, so I punched a hole in it with a punch and uh, put this one in and was able to just wedge it out. Uh, another thing that I did was on some of these that I, that, that I wanted to punch on the edge is I used a chisel that has a rounded edge to it along the edge of the block because I wanted, I didn't want to uh, didn't want to muck up the block and this edge has the same this edge has the same roundness same diameter as, as, as a lot of the holes so anyway um, uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that that some of these holes on the side these are the ones you might get in trouble with some of these holes on the side have uh, can you see in there some of these holes, the ones on the side here, have a, have a ledge around them um, that is not the, uh, that is not the, uh, see that, so be careful on these ones, these ones that are above, this is above the distributor pedestal, the one above the distributor pedestal 
and the one above the motor mount on this side have a ledge in them. These go right through and you can pound that, <laughs> pound it right through. Ask me how I know. And you can get it stuck in there and have a hard time getting it out. These on this side, the side without the distributor, just go straight through. There's no, no ridge on them. So, uh, so be careful again not to knock it all the way in. So what would I do? What would I try? I'm not saying I did this. So you guys try this. And you tell me. You tell me whether this works. I think the secret is to get them moving. You got to get it moving just a little bit, break it, break it free. Um, and I think what I would do is to get it moving, the trick to get it moving is heat. And I didn't apply heat to any of these. If I had it to do again, I would apply the heat the way I did on everything else, get it up to that 240 degrees or so, and uh, uh, with a screw in it, get it up to 240 degrees. See if I can just punch it a little bit with a brass punch. Punch it a little bit, get it to move, shock it, get it to move a little bit. Once it got it moving, see if I could get it to come out with a pulling motion or with a prying down motion. See if I could get it to pull out. So PB blaster, heat, um, and a pulling motion. The other thing I, I should have done is I should have gone and bought a slide hammer. And I tried to make one, but I didn't have, uh, I was going to use a piece of three quarter inch pipe on a threaded rod. I didn't have any rod long enough. So uh, maybe a slide hammer on this. And so my, uh, I also, this, this stud right here won't come out. I had another one in the, in the front, but uh, I'm going to use my high tech striker to uh, light my propane torch. And getting those out, it's tempting to, uh, oh, before I light that, it's tempting to use a bigger wrench. We're going to use the two, the two nut trick, right? To put, put, put a couple nuts on there and, uh, and, uh, and and lock one. I already tried this and it's not coming. And it's, it'd be easier to think, hey, I'll just get a longer wrench or I'll get a big breaker bar or something like that to get this thing off. Well, I uh, actually stripped another stud doing that. So uh, it's really better to, uh, to use heat um, and uh, on the stud and uh, and I'm using uh, I'm using grade eight nuts. Now that may not be a good idea because if you want anything to strip, you want the uh, nut to strip, not the uh, not the bolt. But that's what I ha happen to have handy. Um, one one trick you can use and I, that I have used if this doesn't work is then go ahead and weld the nut onto the uh, weld the nut onto the uh, stud if it strips. Weld it on, and and then uh, I already know that's not going to that's not going to come off. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, oh son of a gun, it's coming off. <laughs> I soaked this thing in PB blaster um, also, and uh, and I tried it after a little while, and the PB blaster uh, apparently was uh, enough to. Uh, to do it, so it came off actually rather easy, but it probably soaked there for oh four or five days, something like that. So, anyway, <laughs> so much for great expectations on this, right? So, we'll just pull that stud out, and that's the last of the studs uh, that needs to come out of this engine. This engine block is now stripped. Um, 